Ah, greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives, whether we want to or not. And remember, my friend, these future events will affect you. The future is in your hands. So let us remember the past, honor the present, and be amused at the future. I predict that politics will make stranger bedfellows than ever before. I fearlessly predict that the once politically inactive South will rise again in no uncertain terms. I predict that every vote south of the Mason-Dixon line could easily be conservative. I predict there will be two political parties in America. One will be the conservative party and the other will be the liberal party. There will be a clean-cut division which no one could conscientiously cross over. This startling trend will become most apparent before the next election and you will join heartily in this stand whether you want to or not. Now, don't say you won't, because I predict you will. I predict fashions for both men and women will be exactly alike in the new unisex trend. The new tunics, which will soon be worn, have no difference except in size. Men are growing smaller in stature, and the women are growing larger in stature, and there will only be three sizes, large, medium, and small, to the new tunic you will soon wear. I predict there will be body stockings for those who would feel shy or modest. Those who wish to wear nothing naturally will be free to do so. I predict the day of severity and dress will soon be at hand, almost puritanical in style, with no beads, no jangles, no bracelets. Men and women will wear exactly the same makeup, the same style of hairdress, and if required, the same type of wig. I was not allowed to say on television, radio, or have it appear in my column as the advertisers would clomp down on me and clomp very heavily. I further predict the new age of nudity, for the human body will be glorified. Body design, self-painted, will take up most of your spare time. Women will decorate their breasts with startling colors while men will decorate their genitals. Those who are politically orinated will always print body slogans on themselves, and this will take place of the present-day bumper stickers. Subdued colors will be used in the cloth, but riotous colors will be painted on your body. I predict that the entertainment personalities of the future will be entertainment personalities and nothing else. When someone pays admission to hear a singer or a comedian, they will not tolerate protest messages. They will demand and receive 100% entertainment, as this is the only thing that television or the radio sponsor will tolerate. Too many items are now off the shelves due to a subconscious boycott of that item by the viewer who rejected the program on which this item was advertised. I predict entertainment will be entertainment and entertainment alone. I predict that in our tomorrow, the little women will reign supreme. I predict that it will be impossible for a man to divorce a woman, for she must divorce him. I predict there will not be the present marriage status, but it will be a marriage contract by which the man must abide, and if a man walks away, from supporting his wife or children, it will be a compounded felony in the eyes of justice. I predict that both a religious and a civil ceremony will be required of all marriages. I predict in the future it will be very possible for a woman to sell her husband to another woman both legally and morally. I predict man will truly be the slave of woman. You women now control 93% of the wealth and spend 87 cents out of every dollar. So what are we poor men to do? Personally, I welcome it because we men have made such a mess of things. You w women must naturally come to our rescue and do better. I predict that you will not be able to turn this record off as they turned me off on the Johnny Carson program with my following prediction. 
I predict every able-bodied man in America will be asked to contribute to a sperm bank. This will later be used in artificial insemination if and when a holocaust should occur. This sperm bank will be open 24 hours a day and a night depository would be accepted. This for the eventuality that the male of the species might become extinct. I predict full medical attention by vending machines. I predict in the future it will be highly possible to, to have an appendix operation, give birth to a child or receive an abortion, have a heart transplant, a hair transplant, or even a brain transplant by vending machine. Your own weight will be controlled by vending machine for 10 cents worth of radaric rays. I predict embalming by radar where the body is turned to indestructible stone. The body will be placed in a fiberglass casket which does not corrode, rot, or burn. Your great, 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 great grandchildren will be able to look upon your countenance and see how handsome you really were. However, I predict if you wish a sacred cremation, your ashes can be placed in a small warhead missile and fired into outer space where you would essentially and eternally continue your journey. I predict within 10 years you will live in a push-button world and you will even have a maid controlled by automation who is never sick, always cleans perfectly, and never misplaces anything. Always on time, never talks back, never gets fresh with your husband, and will love your children. I predict that a financial scandal in the world of fluctuating foreign currencies will bring motion picture production back to Hollywood where it began. You can expect this by January the 1st, 1971. I regret to predict that upon the death of a famous star, it will be found that he secretly married his own daughter, and there are three children to attest to this union. I predict that the very fact a very famous Hollywood star and a singer who committed suicide recently will not be announced due to the heavy financial investment in her unreleased films and recordings. However, the public may never be aware as her exact double may be replacing her. I predict that the coming years will be known as the three R's, riot, rape, and revelry. I predict this insatiable desire for destruction will be fed by the increased use of drugs found in a simple headache tablet. Huge areas of cities will become smoldering ruins. Piles upon piles of human bodies will be heaped in our thoroughfares as a warning by these rioting radicals. Some gutters will flow with blood as rain after a spring shower. Law enforcement will break down and we will be forced to go into a garrison state and other military rule. The riots, the rapes, and the revelry will merely be replaced by crisis, chaos, and carnage. I predict there will always be more people, but there will never be more land. No matter how far the raw land may be, it could easily be a teeming community within a few short years. Once Las Vegas was merely an oasis in the desert, and today it is the scene of the world's largest airport and the fastest growing area in America. I predict that you will live better, you will eat better, and you will enjoy yourself more with the new products, the new methods of manufacturing, and the rearrangement of your work for more recreational time. I predict that within the next three years, Death the Proud Brother will tap upon the shoulders of 500 very famous and beloved personalities. The next three years will become known to history as the years of great personal loss. I predict your only medium of exchange we will have will be a punched card. No coins, no bills, just a punched card. No gold, no silver, just a punched card. A punched card will clear the automation center and buy you the things that you want. However, I do predict that you will not have the energy unions through work. You can draw nothing. There will be no welfare in the future. And I predict the death penalty for all free loaders. I predict that you will live in a very strong nationalistic nation 
We will be independent from all other nations as to coffee, tea, cocoa, rubber, paper, oil, tin, and metals. All of these items will be created in ersatz. Clever imitations, better than the original. Any part of the world can be reached by superjet in 30 minutes. And the mystery of the far-off lands will vanish, and we will love our nation all the more. I predict the law of supply and demand will be the basis for a new world government. I predict that flying saucers will officially land on the lawn of the White House to open, a, open up a new outer space interworld treaty. Mark this date on your calendar. May the 6th, 1991. I also predict the world will come to an end as we know it today on August the 18th, 1999. But it will be February the 14th, the year 2000, until the smoke clears away. I predict that next year will be the insect year. Bedbugs in Boston, fleas in Philadelphia, vultures in Virginia, katydids in Kansas, beetles in Birmingham, ticks in Tennessee, plus the invisible insects in Indiana. I predict nudist funeral processions will not end up at the cemetery, but at some police station. I predict that LSD, marijuana, and speed can change your sex. You will tell your Aunt Tilly that she's really could be Uncle Fred. And I predict a flight to Paris for only $50 with a date waiting for you at the other end. I predict nude bathing on all public beaches and pools within the next 10 years. I predict that although 50% of the coming population will be under 25, 70% of the voters will be over the age of 50. I predict paste on bikinis for you girls and clamp on bikinis for you men. I predict a new one-shot serum that will control every known disease. I predict that the French prostitutes in Paris will go on a stand-up strike. I predict public executions will be shown on television, sponsored by your local gas company. I predict that future television commercials will be so interesting that the viewers will not go to the toilet during the program. And I predict that our local American doctors will go on strike and be replaced by African witch doctors. I predict that human flesh will be canned and exported from Africa for sale in England and on the continent. I predict there will always be more people, but there will never be more land. I predict that population explosion will permit standing room only. Every inch of our land will be occupied. I predict we will live in floating cities sustained by anti-gravity. Huge plastic bubbles under the sea which draws oxygen from the sea itself. Underground tunnels and caves, plus the very center of Earth, which will be a nation unto itself. I predict we will travel by means of non-gravity, a set of a personal wings, moving platforms which float through the air. We will also take a pill which makes us lighter than air. Nothing will travel on the ground. Freeways and streets will vanish and be replaced by small landing fields on the very roof of your very home. I predict that your television set will cover one side of your wall and the figures there will be three-dimensional and almost walk out into the room in natural color, breathing, living, with odors to match. You will enjoy the bracing air of the Northwest the warm enchantment of the South Seas or the swill of the jungle. I predict education will be given children through the television screen. No personal teachers, but there will be a warden on duty to see that a hundred percent interest is sustained. Later, education pills, which will give you all of the education that you may need. I predict that firearms will be outlawed and only police visible will be the eye of the television detection cameras which will stun with a laser ray any and all wrongdoing. A camera eye will follow you from the day of your birth unto the day of your death and if you go to the right place beyond. 
Oh, my friend, how far have you progressed from the Stone Age? How far have we advanced from the ooze and the slime? Are the present doctors really miracle men of medicine? What have they cured? What have they controlled? In the next few minutes, you will be shown a special example. My friend, this is not the 10th century, but the 20th century. I firmly suggest that if you are squeamish, please keep your eyes closed, or better yet, leave the room. I do not advise that children hear this, but for you of the strong stomach and the open of mind, I predict that there is one enemy we have not conquered, and in our lifetime we never will conquer, and that is leprosy. Leprosy, yes, leprosy. The curse of the ancients, the blemish of the present, and the scar on the festering face of the future. Leprosy inhabits the bodies of the damned. Leprosy is highly contagious. The Chinese know that even a look from a leper can bring you down with this dreaded disease. Leprosy is called the walking death. Leprosy, the indwelling devil. Leprosy, the result of yesterday's sin tomorrow. Oh, my friend, we talk about this just for you, to show you the karma of the 20th century. These poor unfortunate souls exist under the same sun, the same moon, and the same stars as you and I, but we are so much more fortunate. One form of leprosy can be most painful, and another leaves the body in a numb condition. Even needles, nails, or hot flame cannot penetrate the tough scales and the calluses of leprosy. The famed Dr. Joseph Neely Hopkins traces the advance of leprosy when he describes, and we quote, First, there will be a tiny spot on the skin, reddish-brown, tender to the touch, somewhat swollen. The spots dry up, leaving the skin tight and taut. This spreads to the face, leaving it puckered and thickened. The eyesight dims and is soon gone. The voice goes to a heavy whisper and then stops. The nerve vanishes. The bones of the fingers rot decay, also the toes, and drop away, and then you stumble into the pits of death. Close of quotes. So says the good doctor Joseph Neely Hopkins. India, China, Africa, and the Middle East are now plagued with two kinds of leprosy. Number one, the tubercular. Number two, the anesthetic. Both are terminal as well as fatal. Why is it that our miracle men of medicine are so helpless against the onslaught by Mother Nature? I predict that leprosy will not be cured or controlled by the stupid vivisection of animals or the scientific torturing of other helpless creatures of God. I predict that when leprosy is controlled, it will be controlled by prayer, by love, by understanding and respect for all. Let us bring the power of prayer to the heathen and bind up the gaping wounds of leprosy by first letting the afflicted help themselves. For the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, and the leper's cure starts with a single step, and the leper must take that step. They are born, they suffer, and they die. So let us hope that the next time the leper lives, he will walk in a, in a greater happiness. Radiant are those who love God and the good things of life, and may the leper's heart be lifted, and may the scales fall from his body, and may perfect health and vision be his tomorrow. The time has come, the walrus said, to predict about many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, or why the sea is piping hot, or whether pigs have wings. Yes, I predict that 95% of all of your shoes within five years will be made of plastic. These will wear 500% longer, will be more comfortable, and remain high style. And here is a footnote to history. The first king of France, Clovis, suggested a velvet carpet over all the earth to make walking easier, but he settled for velvet sandals. I predict that ships will no longer be made of wood, steel or cast iron, but of plastic, lighter than air and unsinkable. I predict that a refined sealing wax costing you 25 cents a tube will permit you to fill your own cavities in your own teeth. Yes, I predict you will soon throw your dentist away and do it yourself. 
I predict that cabbage will be your number one favorite vegetable next year and keeping you trim, slim, and full of them. And here is another footnote to history. Alas, the legendary strongman only ate cabbage and once a week drank a barrel of wild honey. I predict that we are in the twilight of kings, for the age of pomp and ceremony will soon be at an end. I predict that crowns will be worn at a rakish angle, for they are hollow crowns. I predict that the undersea volcanoes and earthquakes in the peaceful Pacific will result that the sea will become piping hot. Yes, huge areas of our westward ocean will boil and steam and bubble up from 40 fathoms. A footnote to history. The legends of the boiling sea was once told by an old wives' tale is now proving true. I predict that our geologists will soon tell us that pigs once had wings, and today the pig is reverting to the growth of tiny wings. Oh, my friend, can it be that Mother Nature is so much wiser than you and I? Will pigs be given wings again to flee from danger? The oncoming danger of a coming doomsday? Yes, my friend, once in the dear dead days beyond recall, what our earth the mist began to fall. You and I emerged from the trees, from the caves and the hills, and from the rocky shoreline to what we are today. In those days we had faith, and today we have little faith. The birds in the air, the beasts in the field, the fish in the sea, all seem to have greater faith than man himself. Perhaps they know the riddle of Mother Nature, while you and I are still seeking the riddle of life. When we have faith, we need nothing else. Remember, my friend, one with God is always a majority. Oh, my friend, there is a tide in the affairs of man which, taken at the flood, leads on to crisis. And here is a 20th century crisis. The nearer any crisis, the nearer the cure. Danger and deliverance go hand in hand. I predict that the 50 miles of water connected the Atlantic and the Pacific will bring the wrath of all nations down on the heads of we Americans. Panama fraught with danger and tragedy. I predict that the great hydraulic locks will remain quiet and the canal waters will become stagnant in this coming twilight of terror. The King of Spain first planned the Panama Canal in 1525. This remained the dream of all kings until the 19th century. Then came the fulfillment with a torrent of troubles. Germany helped to build the canal, but they were denied the use of it in 1914 and 1941. Russia wants the Panama Canal to be international. I predict that the Treaty of 1903 will soon be scrapped. Let every American face this problem alone in the wee small hours of the morning. The facts are, we cannot deny the world the use of the canal. And here is my prediction. I predict that the Panama Canal will lose its importance and greatness due to the new turn of events, which will make air power supreme. Huge air armadas, like the huge ship armadas, which one side swept the sea, will make air power supreme. I predict that once the nation who controls the seas, control the world, but now the nation who controls the air, controls the world. And hour by hour, day by day, outer space is becoming nearby space. Remember, my friend, that danger and deliverance go hand in hand. My friend, as far back as 1538, Nostradamus predicted many amazing things that have already come to pass but one of his most ominous foreboding prophecies will soon be at your very doorstep. Nostradamus predicted, and we quote, during the last half of the 20th century, the great white death will strike from the skies. No part of the earth will be spared. The icy hand of death will strike a vicious blow, and overnight the earth will become a white hell. 
do we dare doubt the prophecy of Nostradamus. Even our geologists respect this long-range weather forecast. Our weather cycle is making a tragic turn, and before long, suffocating hideous snow will fall where only the tropic sun had shone before. The day is not far off. In your lifetime, when this white messenger of death will knock upon every door. Nostradamus further predicted, and we quote, After the last flake has left the skies, there will be no warmth for forty days and forty nights, and then will come the winds of ice from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Remember the words of Nostradamus, for he has yet to be proven wrong. Frigid, violent winds will sweep into your cities, your streets, and even your homes, turning everything into ice. And for forty days and forty nights, man will not be seen. Our world will be a prisoner in a tomb of ice. But the icy heart of Mother Nature will melt, and after forty days and forty nights, man will slowly emerge from his imprisonment. But by the laws of Mother Nature... They are very strange. Just as night must follow the day, the thaw must follow the ice and the snow. One drop of water is innocent, but with others it can be a dangerous enemy. How silently the flood will come, but how quickly it will reach us. In the dead of night, the waters will lap on our very doorstep, and by morning, the land and the sea will join hands, then embrace and become one. Oh, my friend, Coming events have already cast their shadows, and whether you believe it or not, this is all to be a part of your incredible future. Mother Nature destroys as Mother Nature creates, for this is the law of life. Time is endless, and the future is only a continuation of the past. But man must be ready to assure his future. He must also create, preserve, and protect. And I predict it is the miracle of men of medicine who will play a very strange and important role in the stage of the world. Yes, man must preserve, but in order to preserve, he must first create. And man begins his creation with medicine. And with this medicine, he assures your future. He protects you against the inroads of disease and prolongs your very life. In the past, medicine was far from enough. At this very moment, it is only adequate. But in your incredible future, medicine will conquer that which plagues us today, and even the common cold and the simple headache will become a thing of the past, excepting, of course, leprosy. And then when tomorrow becomes today, our miracle meant of medicine, will not only prolong life, but they will bring back life. To die will be almost impossible, for it will be very possible to replace any worn-out part of the human body. A new lung, heart, liver, stomach, or intestine will be installed just as easily as you would repair a watch. As old, tired, and worn out as you may be, just 30 minutes on the operating table, you will restore you and be restored to perfect health and you will once again be young, vital, and ready to begin a bright, new, happy future. Remember, it will be impossible to die in the years that lie ahead. Mind over matter was long a belief of the ancients, and only within the last century has our medical profession used the power of hypnosis. What part will hypnosis play in your future? I predict that hypnosis will be used to ease the violent pain of the deathbed, where the body is beyond human repair. When death is desired, it will be reached through a hypnotic spell. The physical body will relax and peacefully enter the next world, silently and without effort. I predict, too, that hypnosis will be used when we enter the world as well as leave it, Giving birth is the most excruciating pain a woman could possibly stand. A woman's body can endure more pressure of pain per inch than that of a man. And here is the greatest mystery of creation, the mystery of birth. This is a natural wonder of science. For this birth is always under medical hypnosis. Whether we 
enter the world or leave the world, hypnosis will play a very important part. I predict in your incredible future, babes are born and old men die. But hand in hand we march ahead of time with kings and queens, lords and ladies, heroes and dictators. But along the highway of life, we still are to meet the greatest despots of future generations of the 20th century who will be known as the Prince of Darkness. From the plains of Asia will come this disciple of the devil and spread his power across the land and across the sea. And this prince of darkness will turn back the clock a thousand years. He will return women to the life of slavery and servitude. Gone will be the vows of marriage, the right to vote, and the power of choice. This tyrant of mankind will force woman to become the public prostitute and the servant of the state. And he alone will enjoy the monies of her shame. But this demon of greed will not stop at the humiliation of woman. He will enter the house of God with his torch and his saber, and he will remove the name of God from the books and from the tongues of those that dare to speak it. Then, after the desperate span of 13 years, he will be overthrown, and the fate of one who dares to underestimate the power of woman, for tomorrow's Joan of Arc will lead womankind into revolt, and then will come the Golden Age, where there will be a woman at the head of every nation in the world. Women will control business, finance, industry, and will take the place of men at the diplomatic tables, the conference tables, and in the wall streets of the world. Men will take a back seat and lose their influence in your very, very incredible future. Remember, it was also a woman back in 1448, Mother Shipton by name, who foretold, The day of shame will come to pass, No clothes will wear the lad or lass, Who doth the shawl and trousers too, And romp amid the morning dew. Yes, Mother Shipton was quite right. Never in the history of our world Have we dressed so briefly on the beach, And in the garden, or in the streets. I predict that it will only be a matter of time when you will join a nudist camp or health farm and enjoy the complete freedom of nudity. The human body is nothing to be ashamed of, for we were all born in the likeness of God. And remember, it will be in your lifetime when you will walk down the streets, you will shop, and you will attend the theater in the nude. And perhaps in this very same city. It was also Mother Shipton who predicted, waving fields of oat and wheat in tiny pellets we will eat. Gone will be the knife and plate, for this will be the twist of fate. Yes, in that far-off day of 1448, the words vitamin tablets and compressed food were unknown. Our scientists tell us that our growing population will decrease the space for growing food, and we will have artificially and chemically grown grain and vegetables, Farm animals will be a thing of the past, and all of our protein will be manufactured and compressed into very tiny, tiny pellets. For a simple vending machine will offer you the food of the day. And these vending machines will control your weight and your general health through the X-ray eye of a minute electric brain. And for just one penny, your condition will be correctly diagnosed, and this tiny tablet will help you to bid farewell to your ailment or your problem. Oh, yes, my friend, people laughed at the prophecy of Mother Shipton, but even today, she still points the way to your incredible future. As the endless, endless ribbon of time unwinds, it will lead us to the day of infamy, the day the world goes mad. And this is the way, my friend, I predict it will happen. Behind foreboding walls dwells a man of treachery, and it is he who will find his place in the hall of shame as the greatest villain of the 20th century. He and his followers, exiled politicians of many nations, will seize a European country through a cleverly staged revolution. Blood will flow in the streets. And out of this siege of terror will emerge a supreme dictator who, in his madness, will have printed the money of every nation 
and at a given signal, this counterfeit currency will flood the markets of the world. The headlines will scream the news, and men will lose their reason. And on this day, the Black Friday of the 20th century, the gods we worship will write their names across our faces, and our world will be cursed with a wave of suicides that history will long remember. Huge armies of workers will strike against industry, factories and the world over, and be silent. And still, I predict that people will parade and protest, but to no avail. From city to city, nation to nation, bloody riots will rage and spread like an angry fire. And out of this chaos will come an emergency meeting of all the leaders of the world, for it is they who will find a way to restore order and to safely reestablish the monetary system again among the nations. Yes, the greatest swindle of the 20th century lies ahead in your incredible future a few years from now. All of the prophets of the world have predicted through trend, precedent, pattern of habit, human behavior, and the unalterable law of cycle that the 20th century would be our last. No prophet predicted beyond the date of 1999. Does this mean we will suddenly run out of time? Will there be a tomorrow after December 31st, 1999, or August the 18th, 99. Even our Bible foretells the end of all that lives. Ah, oh, let us drink a toast to the days that remain, so that we may live each day at a time. Ah, oh, make the most of what we yet may spend, before we too into dust descend, dust into dust and under dust to lie, sans wine, sans song, sans singer and sans end. Yes, the fate of the world is in our hands, but our greed plus the genius of science will destroy. The final war, the most terrible war, is at the very end of the ribbon of time. But this is not a war of man against man, nation against nation. This is a war of man against the earth. Man in the clutches of inhuman greed and lust will destroy not only himself, but the very earth that gave him life. His knife plunges deeper and deeper into the heart of Mother Earth until Mother Earth herself revolts against man. Just as the world was created in seven days, it will be destroyed in seven days. The mysteries of inner earth, held captive since the beginning of time, will unleash hellish pent-up fury. And as the roaring fires of inner earth wreak havoc and destruction, the core of our world will burn to a glowing ember and die. This will be our world, a lost world floating aimlessly, listlessly in the space which has no beginning and has no end. The fortunate few who survive must find new worlds, perhaps the moon, Venus, or Mars, or perhaps a far-off undiscovered universe beyond the sun, just as our great-grandfathers sought a new world in the uncovered wagon. Our great-great-grandchildren will seek a new world in outer space. Oh, my friend, we dare not doubt the honesty of God, for at the end of time God will give his final command and let there be darkness. And now I would like to give you some Hollywood predictions. Earlier I predicted that Hollywood production would come back to Hollywood where it belongs. But furthermore, I predict a financial riot and a cessation of currencies in many foreign countries which have naturally will bring it right back to Hollywood. And I predict that Hollywood is on the verge of the greatest scandal it has ever seen. The past scandal of the past years mean nothing to the scandal that will soon sweep Hollywood. You and I, who know the very name of Hollywood, will bow our heads in shame at this frightening discovery. To think of it, criminals of this kind, lurching in the very limelight of the Hollywood celebrities, the Klieg lights, Hollywood Boulevard and Sunset Boulevard in the opening nights, who call themselves American, would dare walk in the shadow and the reputation of the great and the near great of Hollywood. 
Oh, my friend, I only hope you realize at this prediction what we face in the future. The days will grow long, the nights will grow shorter, and I predict that truly nothing will change because the precepts of America, of God, of home, mother, and honor will stay. And we will always know within our hearts, no matter what the atheistic cry from the hilltops may be, that prayer changes things. And you and I in the still hours of the very short nights will come to this realization, for nothing can defeat the human heart of the American. No matter where we go, we are the indestructible, the incorruptible, and the unconquered. I would like to make another prediction, and that is the coming years of very violent weather, of storms, volcanoes, whirlwinds, tornadoes, sleet and rain and heavy snows. We will have them within the next three-year cycle, for we are at the top of the cycle, and it may give you small comfort to play this album when we have snow in California and snow in Florida and, of course, torrential rains in New York, Birmingham, Erie, Chicago, Detroit, and even Minneapolis and Wichita. We will all suffer, for we are under the hand of the violence of Mother Nature. And in closing, I would like to say, Oh, my friend, when all else is lost, remember the wonderful future still remains. Now when you see me on the street, come up and speak to me, for that is the only way that you and I can ever win our war against our loneliness. I'll be lonely without you, and may all your shattered dreams be mended by morning, and may success overtake you overnight. Good night, my dearest friend, and God bless you.